The day is April 9th, 2023, and I found myself mindlessly scrolling through Reddit until I came across a particular post. It was a post made to the Cardi Culture subreddit simply asking, what's so special about V2? My first thought was, how dare he ask such an imbecilic question? But then I thought for a second, oh, maybe he's not insulting the era, maybe he's simply uninformed. Well, optimized object, today I'm here to inform you. To those who are not aware, in the Cardi community, V2 refers to the second version of Cardi's album, Whole Lotta Red. Us common folk don't know the exact time period of this era, but it's generally agreed upon that it started sometime in late 2019 and lasted until midway through 2020. There are many fans who call V2 Cardi's best era, but why wouldn't he release anything if it was his best era? Well, it's partially your fault, but I'll get more into that later. I first want to cover version 1 of the three Whole Lotta Red eras to help give more context. Whole Lotta Red V1 is an era estimated to have started in mid-2018 after Cardi's album Die Lit was released, lasting until mid-2019. The songs during this era saw Cardi using the original version of his high-pitched baby voice and featured production mainly from Pierre Bourne. Cancun, Molly, and Skeleton are some of the most notable tracks from this era and perfectly capture the essence of what this era was like, with all three tracks being produced by Pierre and containing Cardi's baby voice. A real list of songs for this V1 album were found by Cardi Hackers in a document related to the album's production. The track list itself is real, but the album likely wouldn't have released in this specific list and or order. Surprisingly, there were actually songs from this era that made the final version of Whole Lotta Red, those being Neon and Place. The song Switching Lanes would also later be released by Pierre Bourne on his 2021 project, The Life of Pierre Fab. So what happened to the rest of the songs from this era? Why did they never release? Well, the first event that may have led to the demise of V1 took place on February 6, 2019, when the first Whole Lotta Red song would surface, that being the full CDQ file of Boulder Crest. This caused a sense of excitement throughout the Cardi fanbase and the unreleased community, but also panic simply due to the implications of Cardi's music leaking. From March 21st to April 13th, 2019, two more songs would surface, Chop A Go and Pop Bottles. On April 14th, 2019, the wildly popular Pissy Pampers song Cardi was featured on was leaked online. This song was never meant for Whole Lotta Red, but its popularity definitely generated more hype for the album as it introduced a wider audience to Cardi's baby voice sound expected to be prominent on the project. From the day Pissy Pamper leaked to the end of July 2019, leakers dropped six more V1 tracks, Exotic, Hellcat, Die Like This, Neon, Molly, and Don't Worry. Fans really began to worry now, as this many tracks leaking could lead to the album being delayed, or worse yet, scrapped. On July 28th, 2019, Cardi had a show in Milwaukee and made an announcement to the crowd that he planned to release his album in the next 60 days. Fans took this as confirmation that Whole Lotta Red would see a release within the next two months. As the early days of August went by, a new theory arose. Fans speculated that Cardi would be dropping the album on his birthday in September, which was towards the end of the 60 days. His birthday, September 13th, happened to fall on a Friday, so a release then would have made sense from a sales standpoint. That specific day was also Friday the 13th, which would have perfectly fit the demonic vibe Cardi wanted for this album. People from Cardi's camp posted cryptic tweets, IG stories, and more, hinting at the September 13th drop date as well. Unfortunately, things took a turn for the worse, as in the 47 days between the 60 days claim and Cardi's birthday, Switchin' Lanes, Red on Red, Did It Again, Buffy, Backup, Asthma, Cancun, and Butterfly Doors were all leaked, likely making Cardi unmotivated to drop the album. While it is not confirmed that Cardi would have ever released this version of the album, many people believe these leaks to be the reason V1 never dropped. After the aforementioned 60 days expired is when the V1 era ended and where the V2 era began. V2, 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 an era notorious for so many reasons. The V2 era started in late 2019 and ended sometime in mid-2020. After fans heard all of Cardi's V1 era leaks, many of them, including myself, fell in love with Cardi's baby voice sound and encouraged him to use it more often. This is likely what led Cardi to push his baby voice to its most experimental during this era. Cardi was now using what some people like Bob Lam call his fetus voice, using even higher pitched vocal inflections than V1. <laughs> The beat 
beats during this time period were also more bouncy and were mainly produced by Richie Soap. Unfortunately for Cardi, the snippets and leaks during this era were met with much more mixed reviews than V1. Despite this, Cardi did the unthinkable and actually released a song, At Me. The song actually became Cardi's highest debuting single, reaching number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100. But just like the aforementioned leaks and snippets, the song wasn't very well received. Evidence of this is the fact that At Me never charted after its first week, meaning people weren't really listening to it on repeat. One of my friends, Steven, even called At Me Cardi's worst song, and I couldn't really disagree. Less than a month after At Me, another song with Cardi's fetus voice was released, that being Pain 1993 by Drake. The song became Cardi's highest charting ever at number 7, but the mixed reviews were no different than At Me, and were even amplified due to Drake's mainstream platform, which put more ears than ever on Cardi's new sound. Fans were generally not happy with this new sound and the fact that it didn't fit the demonic theme Cardi was portraying, and that's why earlier I stated that Cardi not dropping V2 is partially your fault. But why do some people hold V2 to such a high regard when it seemed to be generally hated at the time? Well, I think it's a combination of things. The V2 era was when Cardi was at his highest hype level to release his album, and it's also when he really started to embrace being mysterious, posting and speaking less and less online, and becoming more unpredictable. During this time, his fans built up a community together, theorizing things about his next drop and sharing the pain of Cardi not releasing music. There were also way less leaks during this era compared to V1, starving fans of his music even more. Also, some of Cardi's most sought after snippets that people are still begging for today are from this era. Homicide, trying to get down, pop our pills, act like a fool, and trenches are just a few examples of V2 snippets that are considered grails and are still being talked about years later. Many fans also love the aesthetic Cardi had during this period. For example, his tight clothes and odd poses spawned numerous clones wanting to replicate the look. Most fans also agree that this era saw his hair at its best as well. This era as a whole is very nostalgic to Cardi fans now because of all the hope and excitement that was built up during it. The best way I can answer your question, what's so special about V2, is you just had to be there. One last thing I want to touch on is a recently leaked song that I think could have potentially saved Whole Lotta Red V2. The song You Can Do It Too is a V2 era song that leaked after a successful group buy on March 28, 2023. <laughs> Unlike At Me, I've struggled to find any Cardi fans who don't love or at least enjoy this song. It was supposedly meant to be the lead single for Whole Lotta Red, but was then scrapped for At Me. I don't know who in their right mind made that final decision, but whoever convinced Cardi that At Me was a better song to release than You Can Do It Too needs to be prosecuted immediately. I firmly believe that if You Can Do It Too saw an official release instead of At Me, that it would have been met with overwhelmingly positive reviews, potentially motivating Cardi to release Whole Lotta Red V2. But like Kanye said, I guess we'll never know. know.